Welcome to Unplugged, the tech podcast for digital entrepreneurs. I am one of your hosts, Brooke, the founder of the Sober Biz Collective. Hey, podcasters. I'm Nate Kelly, best-selling author and founder of Pod Studio. If you're looking for tips, tools, and tech on how to utilize podcasting for your business, you're in the right spot. Let's get unplugged. I, I feel like um, with with business ownership in general, like we we get in this space, like we have to do it all. We have to have it all. We have to know it all um, in order to give this value to our clients. And it was so funny. I remember like learning Photoshop and learning um, InDesign and Illustrator and all these things so I could help my clients. And now I'm like working 90% of the time on Canva, you know, like I spent all <laughs> yes. this time trying to make sure I yeah. know what I'm talking about. And all they care about is that it's done. And 90% of the times it's like, I could find a template to get started on. My work is like half, half the work is done. And then I just make sure it's branded properly for them. I save myself the time and they're happier because it gets done quicker. And I put all this pressure on myself for no reason. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like they want a finished product. That's all they want. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, to your point about trying to do everything, being everywhere, being, you know, having a presence on every platform, it can get exhausting. So yeah. And impossible, really, unless mm -hmm. you have a social media team managing things for you. Yeah. God bless you if you do. I hope to be there one day. But I've just committed to the YouTube, YouTube shorts, clipping out my video for YouTube shorts and some reels via mm -hmm. Meta. So really just Meta and YouTube are my focus right now. Um, and so far, so good. How about you? All Give right. us the update. The update. <laughs> any tech? Have any, I bought uh, anything? You'd think I have. I had to buy some USB splitters for karaoke and trivia nights. <laughs> okay. What do you use for? Do you use for karaoke? Whatever system they have, or do you take your own stuff? So we have a system. Oh, the one that I'm I'm hosting a show um, at a brewery that already had a setup there. So I've just been plugging our computer in there, and then we use like a really old program to run karaoke. It doesn't need a whole lot, but uh, I'm I'm looking at ways to upgrade it. And because I always am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> as we do. But um, karaoke, I don't know, I'm having a lot of fun. There's not a lot of fun tech that goes into that. It's a lot of like, how do we get this on more than one screen? And then sitting down and like plan mapping out an HDMI path for, yeah, yeah. You know, for different screens. But trivia has been really cool. Um, we started with a program that allows you to connect through your phone to this like trivia program. So then we have a host come in and host the trivia night. We make all these questions, put it into the program, and then they would like answer and whoever answers quickest gets the most points. They're pretty easy. It was really fun. But uh, for the, the brewery that we're working at, it's we wanted to do like more of like a team vibe where people are like bringing in their friends and, and writing it out on paper, just like kind of more classic. So yeah, reinvented the wheel and like completely developed a trivia program last week <laughs> really? through Canva actually. Yeah. Wow. And it was so cool. The stuff on Canva just blows my mind. Like you can make the coolest you things. You really can't. It's, Anything. It's a PowerPoint presentation, but it looks like you know, it's a, it's a program yeah. and it's got Depending moving on pictures and yeah. Yeah. Wait, so you I, do you treat these like a, um, you incorporate comedy. Are you hosting like as an MC or are you just on the technical side? Both. So okay. yeah. So we're developing it. We are hosting it. Um, my husband's been doing it up until last week and then I'm going to be taking over trivia and karaoke for this one place. But, uh, we're also going to be bringing, I, I <laughs> one day I'm going to refine the amount of jobs I have. <laughs> <laughs> Let's work on that. Yes. Today is not that day. I'm uh, <laughs> hosting a, a comedy class for adults. So at the end of the class, we have a performance and we're going to develop like a comedy showcase. And then the brewery that I'm working at wants to bring the class there and have them perform at the brewery. So it's going to be interesting because like all my friends are sober. <laughs> yeah. 90% of my classmates that are in the, the comedy workshop I'm hosting is are sober. Um, Let's so go down I'm to bringing, the brewery. 
<laughs> I know. Let's go down to the brewery. It's so weird. But luckily, a lot of places are actually offering a lot of non-alcoholic options now. Yeah, like they have a non-alcoholic beer. They have a ton mm-hmm. of craft sodas. They even have a craft soda on tap. Ooh. So there's options. Uh, they also have a food truck outside. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And then having things to do like karaoke and trivia and stuff, it makes it like fun to be out where you don't feel like you have to drink to enjoy yourself. So yeah. I'm trying to, uh, you know, show the world that sobriety can be fun, enjoyable. Absolutely. You don't need to poison yourself to like have a good time, right? I feel like, um, or I find that if there is something to do, at the place. Like if there's an event, the trivia, if there is a dartboard, you know, you can focus on that. It doesn't even like cross my mind that, yeah. you know, oh my God, I can't drink. Oh my God, the bar's over there. I can't look. You know, if there's like something to do to keep your mind or your body busy, you know, it doesn't even cross my mind. And especially if yeah. it's, fun and funny things like this that you can involve, you know, your, your group or your friends even better. Yeah. And I mean, like, again, like have a craft pop and grab like a burger and hang out. Like it's the atmosphere, what you're doing and who you're doing it with that really create the environment and the fun. Right. So yeah, I, I'm starting to enjoy it a lot more now. Um, I was a little nervous at first (laughs) because I gave up that life a long time ago, but yeah, <laughs> but I'm loving it. Um, so all of the tech purchases I've made recently have all kind of gone towards that. And I think it's actually a really cool opportunity for people who are into things like podcasting. Um, these are some of the ways you can supplement your income, like hosting yeah. karaoke nights or, you know, a, a live podcast show or stuff like that. And these venues are desperate for entertainment for their clientele. Like they want to keep people in seats so that they're ordering food or drinks longer and they want to look full. So if you can offer these things to venues, like you can often get a free venue to like host a live podcast show, right? Oh, you can. That's so true. There are endless amounts of locations or, um, you know, gigs out there to be had. My friend Ken, who is a podcaster, hosts these um, host drag brunches every Sunday and like burlesque shows on Sunday evenings. He's so good at it. And, you know, if if you pitch an idea to a place or you have an idea for kind like some sort of event that you can uh, follow through with and come up with the performers or the content to the gig. Um, people, people eat that shit up. I love it. Collaboration is king. I find in the digital it really is. space. It, yeah, hundred percent is. It invites people into kind of our world, but also introduces you to other people's audiences. Introduces you to. Uh, like different, my last two clients that I onboarded, I'm helping them with things that I hadn't done in my business before, producing live streams, setting up home studios. And I was able to add these services to Pod Studio based on the needs of a client and collaborating with these different digital entrepreneurs. I had to educate myself a bit. I had to, uh, you know, make sure I was well-versed enough to kind of guide someone through it. But Mm -hmm. I'm like you, you know, I I love a course or a classroom, (laughs) you know, so it was a, a challenge for me as well. And now not only do I have these other two professional relationships, I can now offer, you know, different services to future clients. I love it. Brilliant. Brilliant. I think too, that, uh, just talking about like creating home studios and stuff like, and events, taking your digital business into real life, right? Like yeah. having th- this is your platform. This is might be how you build, how you want to work is online. Um, you can host virtual events. We just did the 424 and it was a speaker there. That's a really good way to network and connect with new people. Um, give them an opportunity to shine and everybody kind of get to know each other. Awesome. But in-person events, I find, really help you grow an engaged audience if 
you're looking for some local people to connect yeah. with. Um, I, I can't even tell you, like every time I go to a networking event, I get like 20 new followers from that event because I've actually spoken to these people, but they're engaged followers. They care about my content. I care about their content. We are actually connected. They're not just like a number, right? Yeah. And if I'm hosting an event, I w those kind of people would show up. Probably not the other 700 people that are following. <laughs> right. I know. Right. The, I know those 20 would actually be there, right? <laughs> yeah. There, you know that that's a great point, and I think that there can be a, a hesitancy or this like scary thought taking your online business local and in person sometimes. But to your point, those really are the folks who are going to be your raving fans and spread it word of mouth. You know, there's something about the mm -hmm. local girl who's making it big time as the podcaster. You know what I mean? They're, they're going to support you, I think, to a kind of stronger degree, perhaps, than, you know, your online audience might. Yeah. So think about that. They're engaged. They're engaged. And invest, invested in you. And then vice versa, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm engaged, invested with them. Um, it's more of a relationship than a parasocial relationship. Yes. Yeah, good point. So let's talk about, this is the wrap up of season one. It is. Uh, yeah. Do you want to go through like what what worked? What can we do better for next time? I know we've been brainstorming ideas because as a digital entrepreneur, we've actually talked about this. It is so hard <laughs> yes. to add more to your plate. Yes. Um, so like, I know me personally, I've been running into struggles being consistent and, and showing up for the for this project, other projects. And uh, so we've talked about like ways to run season two to make this easier for us. So I want to share those. We're kind of going through this real time with you. And this is probably something that you might come across yeah, <laughs> as a digital entrepreneur sure. trying to add podcasting to your repertoire. Um, so why don't we start, Nate? Like what what did you enjoy about this, this season so far? Many things. Uh, but I think things that worked really well uh, of course, were the tech reviews and tech talk. You know, I think that is a relevant things um, for digital entrepreneurs and for this space, you know, this tech space um, that we are in and that this, you know, podcast is listed as and that that we seek, you know, for our audience. So this technical side for digital entrepreneurs, very relevant. Uh, I love Tech Talk. I think that um, maybe narrowing our focus a little bit, like the the Facebook group, I don't think really is is relevant, um, especially when we're running our own businesses and we each have many platforms that people can find us on and that we can utilize to post things or whatnot. So I think in the beginning that sort of got us off track a little bit and our focus was, a you know, not as uh, a little all over the place in the beginning. So I think focusing on the show and recommending things, I think we can focus in season two a little more on getting partnerships in collaborating with other creators in this space maybe having a few more guests for season two i think that's always a big win uh, for the guest and for us to to share audiences and, and get our faces in front of new listeners those are the top those are top of mind right now let me think about it what are what's on the top of your mind Ah, so I've, I've thought about this a lot because I yeah. love this project and we've gotten some good feedback from people that I know personally that have listened yeah. and have learned, which is really cool. Like that's that's the neatest thing. We're like, oh, I downloaded this app this app because I, I heard you and Nate talking about it. I'm yeah. like, what? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's so Mission cool. Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, like that's what that's what you want as you're creating educational content and creating this space. It's like you hope it's adding value to someone's life. And so getting that feedback was so powerful for me. Um, it just makes it feel worth it because, you know, sometimes getting caught, caught up in metrics and all that kind of stuff can be really yeah. disheartening. It's like stepping on the scale every day. <laughs> like you're just, <laughs> that is you're such just a good analogy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, and especially with a new show, like things can take a while to kind of take off and stuff. Yeah. So 
you know, getting that real feedback from people is so incredible. I definitely agree. The Facebook group, I think was a bit ambitious to try and add, um, to get started. Yeah. I would love, I think we talked about this, um, off camera, but like batch recording our entire season and having yes. like a solid plan of like, this is what our, our listeners are going to get out of this season. Um, this is the message or question we want to answer with this season. And these are the guests that are going to help us with that. Um, yes. just having like a really good kind of pre-planning session and direction and then recording it all before we even put out one episode, yeah. I think would just feel good in my body. Yeah, um, I agree. hundred percent. Cause yeah. Spend I think what like I'm, two weeks, maybe like three or four sessions batch record the entire season then we can plan based on the content that we have this is how we're splitting it up these are the yeah. guests oh one more thing I, I wanted to add is having digital resources you know we can maybe think of two or three digital resources to offer that makes sense yeah. with the season kind of package yeah. everything and then distribute so good and that'll yeah. help us too as as business owners like what offers do we have coming up that we can promote with these episodes that make sense and then have some time to create that content because i'm working on like a 10 a.m to 2 p.m schedule every day yeah yeah <laughs> and so i really need to get better at like actually planning my content and and batching it and just scheduling it and forgetting about it yes um, in terms of like just what I've learned through this process and many others as an entrepreneur is my, I, I can find consistency, but I can't be constant with things mm. um, because my life changes so drastically when my kids are out of school or, you know, yeah. whatever life happens. Life isn't constant. <laughs> life isn't constant. So yeah. I, I started getting down on myself like, oh, because I'm not constant, I'm not consistent. It's not going to, especially online. Like, yeah. Showing up and putting stuff out consistently is really the best way to grow. And it's <laughs> yeah. like my worst, my worst skill. So I'm trying to find ways to like really batch things for when I have that time and space, I can sit down and get it all done. Um, it also helps me stay in that flow state. And I'm like, this is my creative time, mm. you know, because um, I feel like I code switch a lot during the day. I'm a mom and then I'm like yes. in my business and then I, I've got clients and then I want to create for myself. And they're very different states. And I am someone who likes to hyper focus and just be where I'm at for a long period of time. And I work better that way. So it's really cool to learn this stuff. And I mean, for a long time, I beat myself up about that. And now I look at it like, okay, I know this is something that's worth working on and changing and putting the effort into because this is what I would want to create out of my life, right? Yeah. Yeah. That could it's be not like a personal failing. <laughs> no, I mean, that's some people don't have that skill. That can be a superpower, the ability to multitask life and be a mom and an entrepreneur and a comedian and these <laughs> things that you are tackling in life, you know, and the ability to, um, you know, mold into these these different areas of your life. Mm. Superpower. It it's also exhausting though. So yeah, I yeah. I love that about myself <laughs> and I want to find a way to make it work for me and not against me <laughs> and the people I'm working with because that's you know, my worst nightmare is disappointing people and it happens when you get burnt out and overextended and you know. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Well, I think yes. Uh season 1 uh, you know, we I think accomplished what we wanted to in the end. We Yeah have seen some growth and I think that will just continue with season two, especially, you know, being more uh, focused and deliberate about the way that uh, we distribute things and mm -hmm. showcase things. Um, so yeah, a little, a little shaky. We learned lessons. We tried different things. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, in it to win it with you and uh i'm glad that we're able to kind of wrap things up today as a whole and yeah look to the future me too me too i love that like every time i listened to an episode after it was done i was like damn this is actually good we <laughs> like, <are> so <laughs> good uh, 
for God. <laughs> like it's enjoyable and yes. not it's it feels like it has a different vibe than what you typically hear. Like I think we're still we're still gonna figure that out in season two and it's just gonna get better and better. But um yeah, I really like I feel like it's very authentic. I feel like we have good conversations and the tech talk is so fun and yeah, you know, yeah, and I love the guests and I, I can't wait for more of that. We had some great guests. Yeah. Our our two guests. We had two yeah. guests, right? <laughs> but they were both on, like fire, like top of their yeah. game, you know, in their own niche. And, you know, I think we should maintain that standard of excellence, you know, and considering guests yeah. for the future uh, as well. And I think we just continue to be ourselves and authentic and do what we do. and. That's all, you know, that's what we can control. Hopefully the right mm -hmm. person will hear our podcast one day and who knows, sky's the limit. <laughs> Sky is the limit. <laughs> well, thanks for this, yeah. Nate, for this yes. idea, this collaboration and, you know, bringing this all together. I just, I've had so much fun working on this with you and I, I'm excited to dive into season two and just, you know, get better every, yes. every season, you know? That's all we can do is get better. Thank you, Brooke. It's been so fun. Yeah. And to everyone listening, we'll see you soon. Oh, I just got the feels a little. A little <laughs> feel. A little bit of feels. Uh, I love I it. Things end, I know. Also, it's like, yeah, it needs, like, uh, it, I need a break, but yeah. <laughs> you need a break. It's like almost summertime. Like, come on. <laughs>